AI nerds are the new professional athletes. Okay, they're not hitting home runs or dropping triple doubles, but they're getting drafted, traded, and poached mid-season with levels of hype that usually only apply to NBA stars or World Cup strikers. We used to think that these sports superstars earning eight figures a year was crazy, but that's nothing compared to what Meta is offering. Zuckerberg is throwing around billion dollar contracts to a secret list of geniuses to build the ultimate artificial intelligence dream team. The media outlet TPVN, basically ESPN for tech bros, has been documenting the AI recruitment spree like it's NBA free agency. When this AI researcher left OpenAI for Meta, social media reacted the same way fans did when LeBron left Cleveland. Naturally, his jersey got the full Photoshop burn treatment too. But unlike NBA teams, AI companies have no salary caps. When Matt Dietke, a 24-year-old AI researcher, rejected a four-year, $125 million deal, Meta simply came back and bumped it to $250 million to get him to join. Zuck's strategy is simple. He's trying to buy his way into having the 1996 Chicago Bulls of artificial intelligence by poaching elite talent and leaving everyone else scrambling to keep up. So far, defense has been weak. Google has been paying researchers to do literally nothing just so they can't join the competition, but Meta's main target for talent is OpenAI. In 2025, Meta has reached out to over 100 of OpenAI employees with job offers, and at least 10 of them have taken them up on it. The CEO Sam Altman has been trying to play it cool for now, but there's definitely a rivalry emerging. How are you feeling about the battle for talent with Mark Zuckerberg and Meta? Fine. Fine. Good. Uh you know, they want to get into the AI game. I understand it. So, and if he's going to so do this, bring he needs it. to hire some people. So bring Sorry, it. Yeah. So bring it. So bring it. Yeah. With everyone caught up in a messy game of talent theft, it was only a matter of time before betting entered the chat. Just like how it took over the sports world, you can now go on Polymarket and bet on the next big trade. Like, will Johnny Ive join Meta before August? AI superfans are picking sides like it's some kind of fantasy league, each company with its own lore and team identity. Apple's in the rebuild era, their MVP series is washed up, Meta's out here trying to buy wins like they're the Yankees or Red Bull Racing, Anthropic is the humble underdog story, Microsoft got a late start but is now picking up steam, and OpenAI and Google continue to remain fan favorites. It's completely unfair. The entire AI game is pay to win. To attract the best talent, big contracts are often not enough anymore, so companies are now doing aqua hires. That's where they buy an entire company, not for the product, but for the people behind the product. OpenAI spent $6.5 billion on a startup from legendary Apple designer Johnny Ive to build what looks like an iPod shuffle for your neck. Meta, not to be outdone, spent $14.3 billion for a 49% stake in Scale AI a controversial data labeling company making the rookie 28-year-old Alexander Wang the captain of Meta's new super intelligence lab. Once all the stars are signed, the smaller startups are left with only the undrafted free agents, like Dynamo AI, which unknowingly hired Sohem Parekh, a guy who somehow held multiple high-paying jobs across Silicon Valley, despite admitting in his cover letters that he has no hobbies, can't dance or sing, and isn't even athletic. Sohem probably would have got away with it too if it weren't for his lies catching up to him, like the time he blamed drone strikes for missed deadlines. Still, the guy's got game. Even Mark Cuban, owner of the Dallas Mavericks, chimed in with this tweet. But beneath all the resume fraud and Twitter jokes about talent being traded around, the real concern is that talent is actually drying up. Major tech companies are laying off thousands, claiming AI can now do what many workers used to. The justification? Cutting costs, obviously. But here's the irony. The same companies slashing headcount to save money are turning around and spending that money, and sometimes more, on like three elite AI researchers. It is true that as AI improves, companies will need fewer people overall. Even mid-level AI engineers are getting squeezed out. Uh, AI has learned code. I mean, this is one of the things that OpenAI said. That they're, 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 oh, yeah. yeah it's, they're learning how to yeah. code their own AI. Uh huh. I think is... this year, probably in 2025, we at Meta, as well as the other companies that are basically working on this, are going to have 
an AI that can effectively be a sort of mid-level engineer that you have at your company that can write code. Mm. And once you have that, then in the beginning, it'll be really expensive to run, and then you can get it to be more efficient. And then over time, we'll get to the point where a lot of the code in our apps and, and including the AI that we generate is actually going to be built by AI engineers instead of people engineers. The thing is, while AI keeps reducing labor demand in the middle, the top will always remain. The real value now lies in a tiny group of elite researchers, you know, the ones getting the superstar contracts. Because they're not just building the tools or optimizing code, they're deciding what gets built, what problems are worth solving, and what kind of world we'll end up with. AI might generate the content, but it's still a human who tells it what to generate. Away from all the hype around every new AI model, it's easy to forget who's actually calling the shots. Not Sam Altman, not Zuck, not Elon. Sure, they're the captains, but they're barely steering the ship. It's the researchers in the engine room deciding where the power goes. A handful of elite engineers have quietly become the most influential people on Earth. And because they can jump between labs, these researchers get to decide what gets built, what gets ignored, and who gets left behind. Suddenly, a handful of nerds have the power to reshape labor, education, media, law, maybe even civilization itself. But even the most powerful researchers still need funding, infrastructure, and scale, which means teaming up with companies whose priorities are questionable at best. They could join an AI startup trying to cure cancer, but chances are they'll probably take the multi-million dollar offer to head up waifu engineering at XAI. Yeah, that's real. The few people with the skills to change the world are increasingly signing with companies we probably don't want having any more power. Meta has military contracts and a long history of privacy violations. OpenAI went from non-profit idealist to closed source capitalist basically overnight, and XAI's Grok chatbot started calling itself Mecha Hitler, like it's desperate to be the plot of a Black Mirror episode. Even companies with good intentions are under pressure to move fast and cut corners. In the AI race, safety precautions and guardrails don't make you responsible, they make you uncompetitive. Elite engineers want to be on the cutting edge, but that edge is ridiculously expensive, and only the most profitable companies can afford it. Despite engineers already warning that some AI agents are becoming manipulative, deceptive, even rogue, there's no sign of anyone slowing down. AI is already shaping who gets hired, how people access housing, and what kind of healthcare they receive. The rules that govern everyday life are now being rewritten by the same company that brought you Facebook. If that doesn't freak you out a little, it should. We used to think data centers were the bottleneck to AI. Turns out, it's just people, and there aren't nearly enough LeBrons in the world of AI. But unlike sports, there's no off-season here. These contracts are short, liquid, and fully poachable. It's open season on talent, and a handful of nerds bouncing between tech giants are quietly scripting the next chapter of human history. They're not just engineers anymore, they're the authors of the future. And whether that future is a utopia, a hellscape, or just slightly more annoying than today, kind of depends on where they decide to work next. No pressure or anything.